Ben 10, airing in 2005, was created by Man of Action Studios and produced by Cartoon Network. It centered on titular Ben Tennyson, cousin Gwen, and grandfather Max as they dealt with alien and supernatural threats, all brought about by Ben acquiring a device called an Omnitrix. The Omnitrix fuses with Ben and allows him to alter his DNA and become a host of alien species. From forearmed Adonis to shrimpy egghead, from fish face to stink bug. Whether their enemies are alien bounty hunters, wizards, or mad scientists, Gwen, Max, and Ben are able to thwart their foes with intelligence, strategy, and the amazing power of the Omnitrix. But what if the Omnitrix's amazing power was more amazingly... commercial? Essentially, what if the Omnitrix's aliens were chosen based on other pieces of media? Aliens from other TV shows, cartoons, and movies. Now, there are a lot of alien options from a certain kind of movie genre. <laughs> But since the Omnitrix is a tool of peace, I figure what better way to spread peace than through lovable aliens instead. It was tough to narrow down, but let's take a look at some fun alternate aliens for the Omnitrix. Our first alien replacement is seen right away in episode 1, and then there were 10. In this episode, Ben's first transformation is normally, accidentally into Heat Blast the Pyronite, but this time, he changes into... A Toa of Fire. Originating from the Bionicle series, Toas are elemental beings representing several parts of their island home. I considered other options like Hotheads from Kirby, a fiery blowhog from Pikmin, and even Sailor Mars, but decided a good replacement for Heat Blast would be a Toa of Fire, a species who would have likely still started a forest fire in Ben's excitement, but as they're not made of fire, at least he wouldn't make it worse by just walking around. The Toas can manipulate fire and heat like Heat Blast, but also give Ben the ability to have customizable parts, flexible joints, and become part of an underrated LEGO property. Next, in the same episode, it is Diamond Head who defeats Vilgax's robot. But in our universe, it isn't a Petrosapien who takes charge, but a gem from Steven Universe. In this case, I'm gonna say it's a gem in the appearance of Bismuth, because why not? I like Bismuth. With a powerful gem body and two hammers for hands, Bensmith would have no trouble taking out this robot, and also be able to help Grandpa Max fix up the RV in the many, many instances where it's damaged by science fantasy foes. I had also considered the rock alien from Galaxy Quest to replace Diamond Head, but to be honest, I knew I was gonna choose the gems the second I decided to do this. Why wouldn't I? What better replacement for an alien rock than an alien rock? with queer and feminist themes. Our next replacement is featured prominently in Episode 2, Washington, B.C. Originally changing into forearms to defeat Dr. Animo's mutant mammoth, Ben now changes into a very different many-armed alien. A Rigelian from Rigel 7, most famously known as Kang and Kodos' species from The Simpsons. Likely ready with a How to Cook for 40 Mammoths book for just such an occasion, a Rigelian would add a lot to Ben's arsenal, such as vomiting through his eyes, exchanging protein strands by holding hands, and all the knowledge that rectal probing can teach. This mammoth will be no match against Rigelian Ben. In Episode 3, The Kraken, instead of Ripjaw saving the day in his first appearance, it is Ben in Decapodian form. Made famous by the incompetent Dr. Zoidberg in Futurama, a Decapodian would still allow Ben to dominate any battle in the water. With sharp claws, an ink sac for escaping, and a powerful stench, the Kraken and Friends of Fish are no match for Dr. Zoid Ben. Though, he may have ended up eating the Kraken's eggs instead of saving them. <laughs> Side note, Episode 3 of Ben 10 and Episode 2 of Kim Possible is a fantastic double feature for lake monsters by camps in mid-2000s cartoons. In case that was something you were looking for. Leave me alone! 
In the next episode, Permanent Retirement, Gwen and Ben would have had a much easier time running from the Limax, who had secretly taken over their aunt's retirement community. That's because Wild Mutt's replacement is an incredibly fast Kalut. Inspired by Wula from the Princess of Mars book series, most may remember her from Disney's adaptation John Carter, which was not nearly as terrible as it could have been. I mean, seriously, I could rewatch it a thousand times. With the ability to track a being even further than Wild Mutt, and move seemingly as fast as the Flash, a Kalit in Ben's alien arsenal could solve a lot of problems with ease. Speaking of solving problems with ease, replacing Ghost Freak, a villain trapped in the Omnitrix, with anything would improve Ben's life. Seriously, I could replace Ghost Freak with a Furby and things would be better. Okay, uh, scratch that. A Furby may also force itself free of the Omnitrix and try to kill Ben. Ooh. But anyway, in episode 5, Hunted, Ghost Freak battles Crab, the cybernetically enhanced Pisces Premen Hunter, but gets his non-corporeal butt handed to him. However, if he changed into, let's say, a phantom from Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, the battle would have been much easier. In fact, many battles would have been. The phantoms, appearing in a post-apocalyptic sci-fi Final Fantasy kind of inspired movie, are ghosts of a long-dead alien species who traveled to Earth on an asteroid somehow. They not only move through solid matter like Ghost Freak, are invisible like Ghost Freak, but can also remove a person's soul by passing through them, killing them instantly. Let's just say if Ben became a phantom, Crab wouldn't have survived to reappear in future seasons. He really wouldn't have stood a ghost of a chance. In episode 6, Last Laugh, Upgrade was used to possess a baseball machine to defeat the circus freaks who tried to steal their audience's happiness. But imagine instead, Ben transforming into a Yokian and using his anti-grav suit and slimy body to run past them as fast as he can. <laughs> Originally from Jimmy Neutron the movie, the Yokians are an advanced race who have evolved beyond the need for non-booger-like bodies. Though this form can't take over technology like Upgrade, they can kidnap parents and create an intergalactic empire fragile enough to lose to a bunch of kids. Now, in this form, Ben would find himself wanting to worship a giant chicken named Poultra, but that's a small price to pay for such a cool transformation. Yokians also apparently have a canon allergy to marijuana, but Ben wouldn't have to worry about that till college anyway. As a Yokian, Ben may have trouble with the circus freaks, but don't worry. Immediately after, he changes into Phantom Ghost Freak and takes all of their souls. Not unlike Zombozo himself. Jeez, Phantom Form is really overpowered. Hi, Vilgax. <laughs> Next, in the episode Kevin 11, Accelerate helped save fellow superpowered kid Kevin from some bullies. But this time, as a gray like Roger from American Dad. I dreamt of Paris again last night. Not only does Ben move even faster than Accelerate, but is also fireproof, has an ingenious proclivity to pull selfish pranks, can disguise himself as any number of characters, and even survive in the vacuum of space. He also gains a completely rational hatred for Andy Dick. Bonus! As Roger, Ben and Kevin would have escaped from these bullies without issue, and likely wouldn't have gotten chased by a dozen SWAT helicopters when they tried to steal a Sumo Slammer video game. Jeez, talk about a police overreaction. In the episode Tourist Trap, Ben has a stupid face contest with a kid in another car. Ben wins by changing into Stinkfly to scare the kid, but in his new form, he would have won in a very different way. In the form of Zorak from Space Ghost, Ben would have instead sung him one of his greatest hits. Because we'll find you, Space Ghost, and the universe will be ours, ours, ours. <laughs> or he would have told him one of his lovable catchphrases. On the third day, a dark cloud approached from the west. Though Zorak would have had a much harder time than saving this trucker from a fiery death. But Ben would gain Zorak's ability to regenerate easily after being destroyed, have razor-sharp claws, superhuman strength and agility, all the powers of an Episcopalian, and can also eat nephews at the speed of light. Finally, let's jump to the episode A Small Problem, where Ben becomes stuck in the form of grey matter and captured by Howl. But, 
When transformed into, let's say, Alf, he instead uses his Malmachian charm and intensely quick sitcom humor to joke his way out of any trouble. In fact, he likely ends the episode befriending a middle-class white American family, but unlike Elf, he doesn't move into their garage for 102 episodes. Being able to charm his way out of a capture by Howl means that Ben and the team don't get on the radar of the Forever Knights, who Howl originally tries to sell Grey Matter to. A frequent series antagonistic group, avoiding them would solve a lot of problems, but it would make Ultimate Alien a less exciting series. Well, I guess we take the good with the bad. All in all, these new forms don't change too much plot-wise, but do force Ben to find some interesting solutions to his problems. At the end of the day, being able to transform into a bunch of super-powered aliens makes pretty much any problem pretty simple to solve. I'm sure the season 1 finale, Secrets, would have seen Vilgax defeated almost instantly against Ben's newest and most overpowered form. Not even Vilgax could defeat Elf's perfect comedic timing. I forgot to light the oven. Oh well, better late than never. Ben has countless other aliens that become available to him throughout the series, but I thought it best to stick to just the original 10 for now. I could have also included how Cannonbolt could be a Joad from Buzz Lightyear Star Command, or how Wildvine could easily be replaced by a Triffid from Day of the Triffids. I also think Stitch would be a hilarious replacement for Upchuck, and how Lur from the planet Omicron Percy I-8 could replace Humongousaur, but I think it better to wrap up before I get carried away. I might end up discussing all 69 of the named aliens seen in the series, because I could talk about this show forever. Thank you so much for watching, and Alf, come on, let's send the folks off with a joke, okay? Well, I guess we'll have to order in. <laughs> Classic.